Hello, and uh, I guess welcome back to 150 Days of Psalms. This is a project where each day for 150 days, I am reflecting on one of the 150 Psalms uh, and doing so through the eyes of my own experience and my own story. One of the great blessings for me in the Psalms is that they speak uh, to each of us in our own different and our own unique ways as we encounter them and as we read them again and again. This is day seven and we're working through them in order. So today we dwell in Psalm number seven. Begin by reading that Psalm and it's a fairly lengthy one. O Lord, my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me, lest like a lion they tear me in pieces and snatch me away with none to deliver me. O Lord, my God, if I have done these things, if there is any wickedness in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me, trample my life into the ground and lay my honor in the dust. Stand up, O Lord, in your wrath. Rise up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God. Decree justice. Let the assembly of the peoples gather around you. Be seated on your lofty throne, O Most High. O Lord, judge the nations. Give judgment for me according to my righteousness, O Lord, and according to my innocence, O Most High. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. For you test the mind and heart, O righteous God. God is my shield and defense, the Savior of the true in heart. God is a righteous judge. God sits in judgment every day. If they will not repent, God will sharpen the sword, bend the bow, and make it ready. Prepare instruments of death and make arrows into shafts of fire. Look at those who are in labor with wickedness, who conceive evil and give birth to a lie. They dig a pit and make it deep and fall into the hole that they have made. Their malice turns back upon their own head. Their violence falls on their own skull. I will bear witness that the Lord is righteous. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This Psalm 7 begins with the psalmist being pursued. O Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. There no doubt are times in life where, uh, whether it's at home, whether it's in your neighborhood, an HOA, uh, at work where there have uh, been experiences of conflict. And in those times of conflict, it can feel perhaps like the psalmist feels here, like you are being pursued, uh, pursued in an argument, pursued in this debate, pursued because somebody feels like they need uh, to win and prevail. I have been blessed in my life not to really experience this sort of conflict too often where I feel like I'm being pursued by another that is trying to chase me down. But for myself, the times that I have felt pursued have a lot more to do with my own stress than with anything. Stress for me is all about pace. I can have a lot to do, but it's when that volume of work is moving at a pace that it feels like it's hard for me to keep up. When I get something done and it feels like 10 more things have spawned in their place, when I am working through my day and I get to a place where I don't even know what I should be doing next, when everything kind of becomes a blur because of the pace that things are moving. This is a time where we're in now where every day it seems like there's new information and changes and recommendations and, and all sorts of things moving around about us. And that's the sort of thing, that sort of pace that makes me feel a little bit like I'm being chased. But it's not by people. When I'm in that place of stress, I can feel like I'm being chased by time. 
I can feel like my calendar is trying to run me down. I can feel like my to-do list is a bully that is uh, just chasing me around everywhere I go. And when I get to that space, it's easy to want to blame others. It's easy to want to say, why is everyone expecting so much? Or why uh, do all of these things keep landing on my plate? Or why, 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 right? And to look in other places. But the psalmist won't let me out quite that easy. After talking about being pursued, the psalmist says, Oh Lord, my God, if I have done these things, if there is any wickedness in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, the psalmist is turning back and um, talking to God and saying, Hey, look at me and make me take some stock of my own. That is not always a comfortable thing to do. And when I feel like I'm being chased by time and my schedule and whatnot, I do have to turn back at some point and look at the ways that I have been complicit with those things that are giving me that place of stress and pace that I do not like. Now the psalmist goes on then and later gets to a place that seems like it uh, is a place of repentance and calling others to repent. And in this psalm, it's hard for me to tell if the psalmist really uh, is sincere about this feeling of being innocent and this sense of repentance, or is it just another way of talking about others? But either way, the psalmist comes around to the end and says, I will bear witness that the Lord is righteous. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. So when I get to those places of feeling like my schedule is chasing me and that I am having trouble keeping up, uh, maybe I take my own complicity seriously and maybe sometimes I blame it on others, but either which way I go, in the end, there is space to praise God and trust that somehow God is going to show up with righteousness so that we can praise the Lord's name as we go. Let us pray. Lord, when we are at odds with one another, call us into constructive conversation and grant us peace. When we are at odds with ourselves, call us into clarity and grant us peace. Slow us all down this day, Lord, and grant us your peace. Amen. Thanks for joining me for these 150 days of Psalms. I will be back tomorrow uh, around 3 p.m. with Psalm number eight.